find the surface area of the half cylinder using a parametric description of the surface. So the first thing I'm going to do here to get started is to simply sketch this region to think about what's going on. So we want to sketch a half cylinder in three dimensions. So we have our z-axis, we have the x-axis, and we have the y-axis. And looking at what is given here, we have that we have a radius of 7. We have that theta is bounded between 0 and pi, and that the height of our cylinder is 5. So let's try our best to sketch this cylinder. So I always like to start with a full circle on the top, and then we'll remind ourselves that, wait a second, we're only thinking about half of this cylinder. So we want to cut that back half off. So here we go. Remember, this isn't art class. As long as you're labeling, we'll be all set. So here is our cylinder. So we know it's bounded above here by the plane where z is equal to 5, and it's bounded below by the xy plane where z is 0, and we're looking for the surface area of this. So here is our surface S, and let's make this 5 look a little bit more like a 5. So bounded above by 5, below by Z is 0, and we have a radius of 7. So before we begin our calculations, let's just simply recall what is the parametric description or the parametric representation of a cylinder. So we know that our parametric representation for a cylinder, if we let u be theta and we let v be z, then the vector valued function r of uv is defined by the components r cosine of theta, or cosine of u. The y component is r sine of u, and our z component is v. And this is such that u is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to 2 pi, and v is greater than or equal to 0, less than or equal to h, where h is some constant. So this is the general parametric representation for a cylinder, but now we want to be more specific. We want the parametric representation for what we're given. So here we go. We can make a little note to ourselves that since the radius is equal to 7, that for the conversion formulas, we know that x is defined as the radius times cosine of theta, so here this is going to be 7 multiplied by cosine of theta. We know the conversion formula for y is the radius times sine of theta. So that's going to give us 7 sine of theta. And z here is just z. So we have z equals z. So now we can go ahead and use these to find our parametric representation. So let's begin by letting u b theta, and we'll let v be z. And so we can see here that the, para the parametric representation of x in terms of u and v is going to be 7 cosine of u. We have the parametric representation of y in terms of u and v is going to be 7 sine of u. And the parametric representation for z in terms of u and v is v. So we're ready now. We can take these and put them into our vector valued function. So we can say that, therefore, the vector valued function r in terms of u and v is equal to 7 cosine of u for the x component. We have 7 sine of u for the y component, and the z component is v. 
And this is where we want to be mindful of our bounds. So we know that theta is restricted. It has to be greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to pi. So since we're letting u here be theta, this is going to be where u is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to pi. And we also know that this surface is bounded between the planes z is zero and z is five. So since we have that z is defined by v now, the bounds on v, v is greater than or equal to zero, less than or equal to five. So here is our official parametric representation of this half cylinder. And we're ready now to go ahead and start calculating that surface area. So keep in mind that in order to compute our surface area integral here, we need to first calculate or compute the magnitude of the cross product of the tangent vector in the u direction with the tangent vector in the v direction. So here we go. We need to first find the tangent vector in the u direction, which is the partial derivative of this vector valued function r with respect to u. So looking at that parameterization we just found, we are left with the vector minus 7 sine of u, positive 7 cosine of u, and v goes to 0. And I'm going to go ahead here and factor the scalar 7 out in front. So we have 7 times the vector minus sine of u, cosine of u, 0. We need the tangent vector in the v direction. So this is the partial derivative of the vector valued function r with respect to v. So looking up at our parameterization, we see that the first two components go to 0, and then our z component is 1. So we're now ready to go ahead and compute the cross product of these two tangent vectors. So be careful here, don't forget about 7 on the tangent vector in the u direction. So this will be 7 multiplied by the determinant of that 3 by 3 matrix. First row is i hat, j hat, k hat. The second row is the components of the tangent vector in the u direction. So I have minus sine of u, cosine of u, 0. And then our last row is the tangent vector in the v direction, 0, 0, 1. And so calculating this out, we have 7 multiplied by cosine of u minus 0, i hat, minus a minus sine of u minus 0, j hat, plus 0 minus 0, so we just have 0, k hat. And so this leaves us with the vector 7 multiplied by cosine of u i hat plus sine of u j hat. So now we're ready to go ahead and take the magnitude. So we have the magnitude of the cross product of these two tangent vectors. And I'm keeping 7 on the outside, and this is going to be 7 multiplied by the square root of cosine of u squared plus sine of u squared. And we're so excited here. We see Pythagorean's theorem under the radicand, or it is the radicand, which equals 1. So we have 7 times the square root of 1, which leaves us with 7. Woohoo! So we have our parametric representation, and now we have the magnitude of the cross product of our two tangent vectors, and we're ready to now find the surface area. And I'll abbreviate SA for surface area. So our surface integral for our surface area, we have the double integral over the surface S of our function F of x, y, z, ds for the surface area. And now because we want to find the surface area here, we let our integrand, our function here, f of x, y, z, we simply let this be 1. So this is going to be b 
the double integral over that region R of 1 multiplied by the magnitude of the cross product of our tangent vector in the u and v direction, dA. And now we can go ahead and plug in what we just found. So keeping in mind here that the bounds on u and v are both constant. So the order of integration is not critical here. You can pick your favorite. So I'll keep u on the outside. So I have the integral from 0 to pi multiplied by the integral from 0 to 5 of 1 multiplied by 7. And then we have dv du. So look at how cute that little integral is there. Right, now, because these are two constant integrals, or constant bounds, I can pull the 7 out and think about this as the integral from 0 to pi du multiplied by the integral from 0 to 5 dv. And this leaves us with 7 multiplied by pi multiplied by 5 for a beautiful final answer of 35. And don't forget, this is the surface area, so it's 35 square oh. 35 pi square units. And so this is the surface area of the half cylinder.